Hey everyone, and welcome to CounterBuzz. I'm Greg Rosink, and today we're joined by James Cervantes, product manager for FX Luminaire. Today we're talking about something pretty special, a product that we've had called Luxor Linking, but we've got a new version of it. But to kind of bring it back to the basics, James, thanks for joining us. What is Luxor Linking? Yes, thank you, Greg, and hello, everybody. Uh, so Luxor linking is this concept that when you have multiple Luxors on a site, you want to try and make it so that you have a single point of control. And so the way that we do that is with Luxor linking. So the way Luxor linking works is that you have your main Luxor, which is your Luxor with the face pack, and then you have your Luxor satellites or your LSAT units. And in order to link them together, we use Ethernet cable or Cat5 cable in order to daisy chain them down the line. Um, once they're daisy chained, all of the communication goes to the main Luxor. So that main Luxor is the only one that requires programming. It's the only one that requires to be set up to the network. So you want to make sure that you get that one in a location where it has reliable Wi-Fi strength. Um, that way, when you use the Luxor app, you have a single point of control, but you're easily able to expand that system. So a lot of times these sites that require multiple transformers are, are very large properties. Uh, so if you have a property where you need to move the transformer away from the main home, then you want to try and get uh, Luxor linking uh, set up. That way you can only worry about setting up uh, the Wi-Fi network to that main Luxor that's closer to the main house. Uh, a lot of times it doesn't have to be large sites. It could be a front yard and a backyard. Maybe your front yard gets a little bit better signal strength than your backyard. Um, that's just another uh, another way of using Luxor linking. So it is a little bit more work using the hardwired system because you do want to trench and put this Cat5 cable uh, underground direct burial in conduit. So sometimes it uh, it's just not... Uh, able to be done. All right. So you mentioned trenching Cat5 cable into the ground. Now, drum roll, please. <laughs> We're going to be introducing Luxor wireless linking now. So that's a special occasion we're here for today. So James, why don't you tell us about wireless linking? Yeah, that's exactly it. We're giving an option for a non-wired connection. So that's where these uh, link mods, also known as Luxor wireless linking, uh, come into play. So the way that it works is you will take a link mod and you will plug it into your master controller. And then you will take another link mod and then you will plug those into your satellite controllers. Uh, once they're plugged in, they're able to communicate. And now it gets rid of the... Uh, cost labor associated with having to hardwire these Luxors together if they're far apart. Uh, if the Luxors are still close together, you do not need to use wireless linking. Um, but like I said, it's much easier um, and a cleaner installation with these new uh, link modules. So I understand there's different modes of operation. Can you kind of explain that a little bit more in detail? Yeah, um, so there's really two different modes of operation. You have your quick start mode. So you can take the modules out of the box, plug them into your master controller, plug them into your satellite controller, and your system's up and running. Any type of operation done at the master controller, now it's going to wirelessly communicate with that satellite. Um, one limitation to doing standalone method is that, uh, or basic method, I guess you could say, is that the diagnostics that you will be reading off of the main controller uh, will not be uh, allowing you to know which chassis you're communicating with. Uh, so in that situation, if you do want some more accurate diagnostics as far as what the load is on a particular satellite, um, whether it's overloaded or not, then you would want to use advanced mode where you program each module to a specific chassis. Once you have those chassis assigned, then you go and put those onto the satellites. So when you look at the diagnostics on the main Luxor screen, you know exactly which controller you're, you're speaking with or communicating with. Now, our communication, though, being wireless, what type of wireless communication is that specifically? Yeah, so we are going to be using LoRa radio. So it is just another method of communicating wirelessly. So it is different than Wi-Fi. Uh, it is more of a, a radio communication. It's strong, it's secure, and it is, uh, it's able to go very, very long distances. So 
you can get up to 10 controllers um, and it can go more than 10 controllers. The only limitation on the number of controllers is the number of controllers that you can see on the actual face pack when it comes to diagnostics. So, I mean, you mentioned some of the, the characteristics of it, the areas that you put it in, the distances it can communicate, but what's like the real benefit of using LoRa radio over say Wi-Fi communication? Uh, connectivity. It's a, it's a lot easier to connect. It's a lot easier to get these modules communicating, transmitting, receiving back and forth. So um, you won't have an, you won't have to pull your hair out anymore trying to get Wi-Fi modules to the network if, uh, if that controller happens to be far, far away. So it's also an opportunity, too, to get it off of a Wi-Fi network that might be at a school, might be at a hotel or something like that where IT might be a little apprehensive with sharing the Wi-Fi. This is a better communication that's off of the grid, kind of off of the network, right? Yep, exactly. So you still just rely on that one main controller in order to have that hooked up to the network. And after that, you wirelessly look, uh, hook up these satellites and you're good to go. So I like that one, one controller on the network. I feel like we can, uh, we can work with that. All right. <laughs> so, uh, let's kind of recap. I mean, let's ask, uh, for those customers that are going to be itching to use this on their next job, what kind of things do you recommend that they look for or prepare for when using wireless linking? Uh, I think the main point is that you just want to make sure that you know you need a wireless module at the main controller. You need a wireless module at the satellite controllers. You, you know, it, it, the module does have an LCD display, and it will read that signal strength that those satellites are receiving from the main controller. So you definitely want to make sure that it is 80 or higher. Um, and it will continually uh, transmit that signal strength. So make sure that that transformer is in a good location um, in order to get that communication all the way out to that particular um, transformer. And then the other thing is, you know, this is going to save you time. It's going to save you money. It's going to save you labor uh, as opposed to the hardwired solution. And, uh, you know, as we expand this Luxor system, this is, this is just an easy, convenient way to get you, uh, to get you up and running faster. Well, fantastic. Sounds like there's a ton of benefits in going wireless, but you know, Luxor linking is a good option. Wireless Luxor linking gives us a little bit more flexibility. James, thank you so much for joining us. Is there anything else you wanted to add before we sign off here? No, that's it. I appreciate the time, Greg, and uh, I hope everybody's well. All right, James, appreciate you. Thank you so much. And for all of you that tuned in today, we really appreciate your time. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you on the next episode of Counter Buzz.